How to make the elephant door stop. Learn how to make 3D shapes with Amber Makes Sewing School and make this beautiful doorstep to decorate your home. Cutting out. Start by giving the panel in your kit a good press. Now you can see all the different pieces are labelled and they've all got little boxes with letters next to them. This is to show what matches with what piece. It's much easier for construction when you can see what letter to match with what letter on another piece. So have a look at it all and you can see all the pieces are labelled as well. Now to start off with, I found it easier to cut out one piece at a time but roughly outside the drawn area so that when you cut round it you're actually cutting round it including the labels as well because if you take them out from your panel like this it's easier for labeling it so just cut roughly round each one with all the labels and names still attached to them once you've cut them all out you can then do the labeling now these little labels need to be pinned to the place where they're shown but the other thing you can do and i found this made it easier is to draw on the back in pencil where the labels are. If you draw on the wrong side, it won't be seen and you can actually see through it as well. Now, once you've done that, you can then cut out round the outer line. All the seam allowances are included, so just cut round the outer line. And then to also help, you can then cut out the little square box and pin that to the place where it was, where the arrow is pointing. If you've drawn it in pencil, you'll have it there, but by pinning it on the right side, you could be sure that you remember. And do that all the way around and pin it in the place where the arrow is pointing. Also, print out the, cut out the name of the piece and pin that to the right side of each piece, near the top, so that you remember which is which. With the sole pieces, they've got arrows. These are to show the centre. So just draw that arrow on the back. And then you'll know where it is for positioning later. And then the leg label, you need to pin where the arrow shows you so that you know which side you're going to attach to the leg later. And you can see I've labelled them all as well. So I've got leg and all the arrows for the soles. These are optional applique soles. You can draw or embroider your own name on the blank one or use the Ellie name that we've had. There's the tail. With the right head and the left head, you need to pin the ear section, just to remind you that that V cutout section is where the ears will go later. There's the left tummy. You can see I've pinned all the labels on and the right tummy, and I've also drawn on the back in pencil. It's best to use pencil rather than an eraser pen, and then they won't disappear when you're pressing. There's the right body, and I've pinned all the labels on. Now there's a little slit between the legs that's drawn in a black line. You need to cut along this. Only cut along the line itself. It's only a quarter of an inch long. This helps when attaching all the other pieces later because it will help it to bend round. So again, here's the left body and cut along that little drawn line. This is just to help it to ease later. And then the ear pieces, you've got an outer ear and an inner ear for both of the ears. Making the right side of the elephant we're going to start by sewing the tummy to the legs just for the right side of the elephant. So take the right tummy and the right front leg. Now you can see the A and the B points that are marked on the right front leg and the A and B points that are marked on the tummy. And we're going to sew them and match them together. So you can remove the A and B labels. And if you've drawn them on the back in pencil, then you'll remember which is which as well. Take the just the A and the B labels off the tummy, don't remove the other labels. Now pin, match the A points and you can see these have been designed in such a way that you can match up the straight edge on the top and that's including the seam allowance so it makes it easier to sew because the pieces have been cut and angled so they will fit like this so you can match them exactly at the top edges. So anchor them with pins, right sides facing, at the A and B points and then ease between. The curves are slightly different shapes but they are the same length so they will fit. So if you just pin vertical pins at this stage just because you need to anchor a lot of places on this seam and if you put vertical pins in it will hold it more tightly and you can put more in but you can see I'm just easing it if you just pull the pieces very gently they will fit nicely together and then those curves will match up make sure you're matching the raw edges and put plenty of pins in like I've done once you've done that sew together from the B point to the A point using the quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once that's done, it will look like this.
Now you can see on the right back leg, there are C and D points. Exactly the same, there are C and D points on the tummy. So remove the C and D labels. And then remove the C and D labels from the tummy. If you've drawn them in pencil, it will remind you where they are. Now place the right back leg, right sides facing on top, match up the C points and pin together. And again, the pieces are angled in such a way that you can match up the straight edges at the top. So it fits really nicely. It makes it much easier with construction when you've match them like this and then gently in the same way as you did with the front leg ease between and put vertical pins in because you can get more in if you pin it correctly at this stage and that it's nice the two pieces are nice and flat with no creases it's a lot easier to sew together so once that's done sew the two pieces together and it will look like this and now this completes the right tummy and leg piece. Sewing the inner leg and tummy seams. Take the right body and then take the tummy and leg piece that you've just sewn together. Now we're going to pin that to the bottom of the right body, matching up the E and the F points. So you can remove the E and the F points from the right body. And then remove the E and the F labels from the legs. Then match up the E on the leg to the E on the right body. Place it right sides facing and make sure the raw edges on the side and bottom edge of the leg are matching up with the body and place a pin at that point. Then turn it round and match up the F point. So the F point on the leg will match up with the F point on the right body. You can see that you're matching up the side and the bottom seams here so that the raw edges are matching. Now the seam that's joined, which is actually the C point, but that seam, if you open it up flat, it needs to sit right on top of the snip that you made in the right body at the beginning. So just make sure the seam is sitting, can you see here, on top of the snip and place a pin to hold the two together. That anchors that point. Then you can pin between. So you're pinning between the F point and the seam they're the same length so they'll match. Make sure the raw edges are matching when you do this and put a vertical pin in. Now you need to just pin between the A point and that, the E point and that seam. Place vertical pins all the way along up to the seam because that will fit really nicely. And I'm going to open up the seam so that when I sew it in place, I will sew over that seam to hold it open. If you put a pin in across the seam allowance, it will hold it open. Now, this next section is quite a tight curve. So I found it the easiest way is to make little snips. And it will just hold it, it will just ease round a bit better. So you can see, look, it's not fitting brilliantly because of the curve attaching it to a straight edge. So the easiest thing to do is take your scissors and make some little snips just up to the seam line. So just a little bit less than quarter of an inch. And I've spaced mine about quarter to a half an inch apart. And now you can ease that straight edge of the tummy to the curved edge of the right body. Because the flat the flat tummy section will open up because of the snips and you can ease it round and place, put plenty of pins and do turn it over to the other side every now and then just to make sure it's nice and flat. Then sew together all the way along this pinned edge and then it will look like this. You can see it curves really nicely. I've got no creases or tucks on the other side. If you find you do, just unpick the bit with the crease or tuck and restitch it. And that's that section finished. Sewing the outer leg and tummy seams. Now place the right front leg, right sides facing with the right body matching up and pinning the G points. So remove the labels 
and match together the G points so the raw edges are matching and pinned together. Now match up the H points. So there's the H point on the tummy and the H point on the body. So match together those H points. The pieces have been cut so that they will, the angles will fit together nicely. So make sure you match up the raw edges and then pin together between those points. You will be pinning across the A seam that joined the right front leg to the right tummy. So fold that open and flat and pin it into place to hold it open. And then just ease between and place vertical pins to hold it in place between the G and the H points. So this is one of the outer leg seams, the right outer leg seam pinned together and then sew all the way from the G to the H point across that A seam and it will look like this. Now we're going to do the other outer leg seam. So you've got I, J and K points on the body and then you've got I and J points on the leg and tummy piece. So match together the I points. Again, remove the labels. Always remove labels just one at a time. So you move them just before you pin them. Otherwise, if you move all three of them, you might forget which is which. So match up the I points so that the raw edges at the side and the bottom are matching up. Pin together. And then next, do the J points. Because the labels have been pinned so that they are in order. So you know which order to do them in. Make sure the J matches up at the top and the side curved edge and it has been designed so that they will match up exactly. Now you need to match up the K point. The K point sits on the D seam that you sewed earlier. So open up the D seam and make sure it sits on the K point and pin together there. Now you've got it anchored in three places, so all you've got to do is pin together between those. Again, because the curves and the edges are slightly different shapes, but they're the same length, you will need to just pull both pieces of fabric very gently and then they will ease together. Now you need to sew this together. When you reach that seam, pivot with your needle in the fabric, lift the presser foot to change direction and sew to the other side. So you can see here I've sewn along, pivoted at that seam and then sewn to the other side. And that's this piece finished. Personalising the soles. Now this is optional and you can choose whether you want to write or embroider your own name on a sole or use the Ellie name that we've done. I'm going to show you how to do it with this. Now to start with I've pressed Bonderweb paper side up to the wrong side of this sole. You don't have to use Bonderweb, I just find it easier to hold the piece in place when I'm appliquing. But whether you've used Bonderweb or not, cut round the outer line. If you've used Bonderweb, then use a pin to scratch across, that will just cut the paper and then you can peel it away. If you're using the other sole, obviously you will have either drawn in permanent pen your chosen name or embroidered it, but the method is the same. Now you can attach this to any one of the four soles, it's entirely up to you. So I'm going to attach mine to the right back sole. Take the label off, and but keep it, you'll need to put it back on in a minute, and place this in the centre. Now you need to know where that leg position is. So because you can't sew on top of the leg label, just write that in pencil on the back so you remember where it is. Then you can place the applique sole centrally on top of the sole. You can judge this by eye or you can measure it to be sure. If you've used Bonderweb, press that into place to hold it and then sew it into place. The Bonderweb won't be a permanent fix. I've just worked a line of top stitching around here then when you've finished, pin back the label on your sole so you remember which one it is. Sewing the soles to the legs. So we're going to sew the right front sole into the section with the right front leg and the right body, as you can see here. 
Now, because the sole is curved and the edges of the bottom edges of the right front leg of the right body are straight, we're going to make some small snips and it helps to fit it in place. So make the snips just a little less than quarter of an inch long so that they don't go into the seams. And I've spaced mine about half an inch apart. You don't need to measure this, just judge it by eye. Make the snips all the way along the bottom edge of the right front leg and the right body. It will make fitting the soles a lot easier in a moment. Now once that's done, take the right front sole, you can remove the label, and you need to make sure that these arrows sit on the seams that join the right front leg to the right body. Also, the leg section that's marked on the sole needs to be right sides facing with the right front leg not the right body. So you can see there's the label for the right front leg. That's the side with the leg marks on the sole. So make sure they map, they're the same. Now match the seams with those marks that you made at the beginning. This just means that the sole will be in exactly the right place. So pin together at that seam, then turn it around and pin make just double checking again that the leg section of the sole is against the right front leg section. Again, match that line with the seam and pin together. Your sole is now in exactly the correct place and facing the right way. Now you can pin together between these anchored pins. Because you've snipped the edge of the straight edges, you can ease it gradually round and it will fit really nicely because you can open up the snips a little bit so it eases round and pin it into place all around. Use plenty of pins and place them vertically. If when you get back to the other seam it's not fitting brilliantly you can always go and undo some of the pins because it will fit because you've snipped the seams and you can ease it into place. And make sure that the sole is nice and flat and you haven't pinned any creases. Double check again that your legs are facing, the leg section of the sole is facing the right leg. Then you can remove the label and pin the other side into place in the same way. Then sew them together with the right front leg and the right body uppermost and the sole underneath. This just helps to make sure you don't get any creases or tucks. Now you can sew the other sole in, the back sole. This is done in exactly the same way. The leg section I've marked on there so I rem it's easier to see than keep turning it inside. There's the right back sole. Remember I wrote leg on there when I was appliqueing it. So make sure that the two legs are at the same side. Open up the seams and match those to the drawn lines that are on the sole. And pin together and if you pin it together by keeping the seams open then they will stay flat when you're sewing over them again match up the line with the seam on the other side and then the leg sections both match up and then pin together all the way around and sew it together and then it will look like this and you've attached the right back sole now if we turn this right sides out you've now made the whole of the right side of the elephant. You've attached the body, the tummy, the legs and the sole and the right side of the elephant is made. So put this to one side for now. Making the left side of the elephant. The left hand side of the elephant is assembled in exactly the same way using all the left pieces. So you need the left body, the left tummy, the left front leg, the left back leg and the two left soles. Follow the instructions for the right hand side and make it in the same way. Although all the fabric pieces are printed in reverse, the actual construction is the same and all the labels and the letters are the same. So just follow that and it will work um, together in exactly the same way. And then you've made the whole of the left hand side of the elephant. So put that to one side for now. Making the tail. Take the tail, you can remove the label now, and fold it in half lengthways with right sides facing so that the raw edges are matching. You can see that the top edge is slanted, this is so that it hangs properly on the elephant. 
make sure when you pin it together, you match up the printed area. It will match because it's in this printed in the same place, but just double check when you're pinning together that you match up that printed end, just so you get a neater tail. Now sew together along the side, around the curved bottom, but leave that top slanted edge unstitched like this. Now to reduce the bulk in the tail, just trim off the corner and then trim, trim the seam allowance in half and that will just make the tail less bulky. Now you need to turn the tail right sides out. I'm using a turning tube for this because it's easier. So just put the tube inside and poke it through with the stick that comes with the turning tube. If you don't have a turning tube, you just have to turn it carefully right sides out. Once that's done, then you need to make sure the seams are laying right on the edge. So if you use the point of your turning tool or any other turning tool, very gently run it along the seam that pushes the seam to the edge. Then place it on your ironing board, roll it gently between your fingers and then you will find that the seam will lie on the edge and then give it a press. And this will just give you a much neater finish to the tail. Then tack together across the top edge just to hold it and then tie a knot in the tail if you want to. You don't have to, but it just adds a little bit of character to the elephant. So if you just tie the end into a knot, then adjust it. If you do it loosely to start with, you can adjust it so you can get it right at the end. So it looks nice and neat. Now take the right body section and tack the place, the tail in place so that the seamed edge of the tail is level with the top of the right tummy seam and make sure the raw edges are matching. So the straight raw edges of the tail need to match the body and make sure that the seam is level with the tummy seam and then tack it into place. So the tail will lie flat over the right body and the seam of the tail is in place. Joining the body and the tummy. Place the assembled right body right sides facing with the assembled left body. Start by matching up the L points on the right body with the left body. You can remove the labels and pin them together, making sure the right raw edges at the top and the side match up. Then you need to pin together the J points. You also need to make sure that the seams at the top of the right tummy and the left tummy pieces are matching. They're in exactly the same place, so just open up the seam allowances so that they're flat. Make sure those seams are sitting exactly on top of each other, and then you can pin at the J point. Now pin together between the J and L point. You'll be sandwiching the tail in between, and you are pinning here across the curved top edge of the elephant. When you get to the printing, this is the decorated area, which is the blanket that goes over the elephant. Make sure that the prints match up. They're printed in the same place, so they will do, but just make sure that as you're pinning that you've got them matched up nicely. Now, once you've pinned there, you now need to pin down the side. So pin from the J point to one edge of the turning gap. Now, the turning gap is easy to see because I've made this a bit wider. The turning gap is actually half an inch rather than a quarter of an inch, just to make it easier to sew the elephant clothes later. So pin from one side of the turning gap, which is the extended seam allowance piece, up to the J point, and then leaving the turning gap unpinned, match up the other side of the turning gap. You can see it's extended, so it's easy to match up. And then from there, pin all the way along the other end of the tummy. making sure that those raw edges match up. All the pattern pieces have been designed so that all of these edges are the same length so that it will fit together quite nicely. Now, once you've done that, sew all the way along the top, pivot at that J point, stop stitching and reverse stitch one side of the turning gap, start stitching again the other side of the turning gap, gap and sew to the end. And then it will look like this. Now you will have a little triangular point which I've trimmed off once you've finished it. So just trim that off into a nice curve. You can see I've reverse stitched. The turning gap is left unstitched. I've reverse stitched at the other end. And now the turn the elephant body right sides out and the actual body bit is finished. So press it so all the seams lie on the edge. And 
and make sure all those prints are matching up and your body is finished and you can put that to one side ready for the next stage. Making the ears. Let's start by making the right ear. Take the right outer ear and the right inner ear and place them right sides facing. The ear two ear pieces are exactly the same size and shape so they will fit together nicely, making sure that you match up the raw edges, pin it together all the way round. I like to pin either end and then pin round the curves between them and then it fits nicely. Once you've pinned it together, sew together all the way around the curved edge, but not along that top straight edge. You'll need that for turning later. Now to reduce the bulk in this seam, trim the seam allowance in half. You can also make little clips or notches in the curved edges, but I found that just by trimming it in half, that was enough to get the seam laying right on the edge. Now turn the ear right sides out through the gap that you left stitched on the straight edge. Then push your fingers inside so that the seam is laying on the edge. So just you run your finger along that seam. Now for a nice neat finish, place the ear on your ironing board, roll the seam between your fingers and it will lay right on the edge. And this just will give you a nice neat edge to the ear. Now tack the ear together along that straight edge just to hold it neatly together. Now we're going to turn the top edge of the ear over by three quarter of an inch. Now the easiest way to do this is on the inner ear side, measure one and a half inches down from the top of the ear and place a pin, then fold the top edge over so it meets that pin and then pin it together. And now you've folded the top edge over by three quarters of an inch. And then tack that fold into place. Once that's done, obviously I've taken the inner ear label off. I've kept that one on because I need to know which is right and left. Repeat that process to make the left ear in exactly the same way, making the little fold as well. Attaching the ears. Take the right ear and place it on top of the right head. So the inner ear is on top of the right head and facing the elephant's eye. You can take the ear section label off. It's just to show you wherever it is. So put the bottom of the ear at the bottom of that cut out V slot. Make sure the inner ear is on top of the elephant and the outer ear is facing upwards. Pin into place at the bottom and then pin into place all the way around. Now the straight edge of the ear is obviously straight, whereas that cut out V section on the right head is curved. But if you just bend it round and place plenty of vertical pins in, you can just get the ear to curve round that cut out V shaped ear section on the right head. So just pin it into place and then tack it into place. It makes it easier for the next stage. Once that's done, you can see the inner ear is on top and facing the eye. Fold back the ear section of the head so that the raw edges are matching. So pin it together at the top so the top of the head bits are matching. And then the raw edges of that cut out ear section, pin them together. You'll obviously be pinning through the ear at this point and sandwiching it between. Now you need to stitch it together all the way down. When you get to the bottom of the ear section, angle your seam so it goes into a point gently below the raw edge, as you can see here. This is about a half an inch below reverse stitch to secure it. And the dart that you've created here gives the right head a little shape too. So give it a press, press the seam allowances over to one side towards the eye and push the point of your iron into the dart seam to make it lay open and flat. And then that's the right head and ear finished. Repeat this to sew the left ear to the left head in exactly the same way. Assembling the head. Place the right head and the left head right sides facing. Now match up those dart seams where you attached the ears earlier and pin them together so the seams match. And then pin together at the top of the head, making sure you don't pin through the ears. The ears need to be out of the way. And then pin together all the way around. 
I've made sure that the prints are matching up, just double checking the particularly the top and the bottom edges of them so that the decoration on the elephant will flow nicely from one headpiece to the other. They're printed in exactly the same place, so they will, but I always just double check that they're matching up as I pin them together and then pin together all around the raw the edges of the trunk. Do make sure that the raw edges of the right head and the left head are matching up as you're pinning around the trunk. They're printed to the same shape, so they will fit nicely. And then pin all the way along to the bottom of the head, which is underneath the chin. The section between the top and the bottom will be left unstitched. So once you've done that, sew together, started from the top, sewing all the way around the trunk and then stop at the bottom of the head. So that's unstitched. Make sure the ears are out of the way so you don't accidentally stitch through them. Once that's done, you now need to clip the seams because these are quite tight curves. And if you don't make little clips in the seams at this stage, then when you turn it right sides out, you'll have little creases, particularly in that inner edge of the trunk, and it won't lie nice and flat. So it's worth taking the time to clip round these because then when you turn it right sides out, the seam has got room to open and move with the clips so that when you press the seam flat, it will open out nicely. So just take the time to this. Make sure you don't cut into the sewing. So just make small clips. As it straightens out, you don't need to make so many clips. Or they could be spaced further apart. But when you're on a tight curve, the tighter the curve, the closer the snips need to be together. Now, because this is a really tight curve on the inside of the trunk, I'm also going to remove some of the seam allowance. So if you clip out little triangles, these are called notches, just from this area, it reduces the bulk, but also allows the seam to open out even further because this is quite a tight curve and you'll find it much, it will open out better. Once that's done, turn the whole head out, right sides out through that gap that you left. And push your finger into the end of the trunk. Now to make sure the trunk is turned out correctly, I'm using a turning tool. Well, I'm using the stick for my turning tubes. And push that into the seam. Do it gently so you don't break through the stitches. And then run that all the way along the edge of the seam. Now for a really neat finish, press the seams so they lay on the edge. So if you press it, press it on your ironing board, roll the seam between your fingers, then press it. Now, something I often do here, if I'm finding it's difficult to get the seams pressing on the edge, is spray it very lightly with a little water, so a little sort of misting spray. If you just spritz the whole piece of fabric, then when you come to roll it between your fingers and press it, you will get a crisper finish and you'll also, the seams will lie on the edge better. Because sometimes when you've got all of these curves and seams, it's difficult to get all the little creases out. So a quick spritz of water and then press it and you will get a neater finish. And then that's the head section finished. Joining the head to the body. Turn the assembled body wrong sides out, but keep the head right sides out. Now place the head inside the body, matching the top seam and the bottom seam. So if you place the head inside the body, match the top seam, the one that joins the right head to the left head, with the seam that joins the right body to the left body. So you can see here, there's the seam that joins the right head to the left head, and there's the seam that joins the right body to the left body. Now open out these seams with your fingers, and then pin together, making sure the seams sit exactly on top of each other by rolling them on top. By opening out these seams, you'll reduce the bulk and you'll get a neater finish. Now tucking the rest of the head and the ears inside, match up the seam that joins the right head to the left head at the bottom with the seam that joins the right tummy to the left tummy. Again, open out the seams and pin them together. By matching the seams exactly, you know they're in the right place, but you'll also get nice, neat lines on the elephant when you come to stuff it later. Because those seams are matching, 
the elephant will float from the head to the body better. So anchor it at the seams and then all you need to do is pin it together between. When you get to those tummy seams on the outside, again, open them up and pin them so that when you sew on top of them that they're nice and flat. And then the pieces have been designed so that the, op the head opening on the body will fit the body opening on the head. Remember, tuck those ears inside because you don't want to get them caught in the seam and pin it together all the way round. till you get to the other side and remember to open up the tummy seam and pin it open. This just will give you a neater, flatter finish. Now once you've pinned it into place, sew the head to the body all the way around. And that's done. Your head is now attached to the body and you're finished sewing the elephant. Finishing off. Now you've finished sewing the elephant, you now need to clip all the seams and the curves. So on every seam, particularly the curved ones, I've made small little snips like this all the way along. So the snips are a little less than a quarter of an inch so they don't touch and cut through the seam. And the tighter the curve, the closer I've placed them. But you need to take the time at this stage to work your way all the way around every seam of the elephant. Because if you clip the seams like this, it means that when you turn it right sides out and press it, the seams will open nicer and they will lay on the edges and you will just get a neater looking elephant. It will look have a much more professional finish because it will look everything will open out nicely. So take your time to clip all of the seams. I've done all of mine in advance. Now turn the elephant right sides out through the turning gap that you left in the tummy. Now, at this stage, you won't need any of these labels, so remove all of them. If you haven't done it as you've gone along, take all of them out because you won't need them anymore. Now, this is the stage where you're going to press the elephant. And again, this is a really important stage that is worth taking your time of because then when you come to stuff the elephant, this, the stuffing will sit much more nicely inside it because the seams are on the edges. So place your elephant on your ironing board and for every seam, roll it, place it down flat, roll it between your fingers till the seam's laying on the edge and give it a press. Um, like I did with the head, it's worth giving these a little spritz of water before you press them and you will just get a crisper finish and the seams will lay on the edge. Now take the time to work all the way around the elephant to do this. You can see I've also folded under the turning gap on the elephant's tummy by half an inch so that it matches up with the edges of the seams. So that's all pressed under so that when I come to fill it in slip stitch, it will stay in place. So that's the elephant finished and ready to fill. Making the weighted filling bag. You need a weighted filling bag so that the door stop will be nice and heavy. Now take the fabric that you've cut for this and fold the top long edge over by half an inch to the wrong side and press. Now fold the fabric in half right sides facing and pin together along the side edge. Make sure when you pin together the folded under edge stays folded under and then pin together along the side and across the bottom and you'll have a fold on the other side. I've used a light coloured plain cotton fabric for my weighted filling bag so it won't show through the door stop. So down the side and across the bottom but leaving that top folded under edge open and then it will look like this. Turn it right sides out. I've used half an inch seam allowance for doing this because it just makes the seams a bit stronger and more secure so that the filling won't leak out. Give it a press all over so that you've got a fold on the right hand side press that fold into place you'll need that in a moment and then it will look like this and the edge is still turned under you now need to fill it now I'm using play sand for mine but you can use dried rice you can use plastic pellets um, anything that will have some weight for the sand to give you a rough idea I've used about a kilo but the most important thing is you need to fill the bag halfway so whatever filling you're using make sure you only fill it halfway up. It's obviously different fillings weigh different amounts, but just fill it halfway. Now at the top, take the fold that you press that's opposite the seam and place that fold on top of the seam and pin together. 
This is because when we sew it together, it by pinning the fold on top of the seam rather than pinning it straight across, it gives it like a sack-like appearance and it sits better inside the elephant rather than being a rectangle. By pinning it and sewing it like this, it just sits nicely. Now sew it together a quarter of an inch from the top and then work another line of stitching a quarter of an inch below this. These two lines would just secure the filling inside. So there we go, that's what it will look like. That's your weighted filling bag. Remember, only filled halfway. Stuffing the elephant. So now you've made your weighted filling bag and the elephant is ready to fill. So place the weighted filling bag in the turning gap. Now it's too, the filling is too big to get through the gap, which is me, why you've only filled the bag, half filled the bag. So put one end of the bag in and then pour the filling through and into the elephant so it goes into the other half of the bag. And now that's inside. Now arrange it so that the weighted filling bag sits inside where the tail and ends of the tummy section are. This is where the elephant will sit on its bottom and it will hold it in a sitting position. So place it in that end. You can always adjust it later once you've stuffed it. Now start filling the elephant with your soft toy stuffing. Start by stuffing the head. Push the stuffing into the head and down to the trunk. It's best to work with small pieces of stuffing teased apart so that you're not working with large clumps but just small amounts. Tease them apart to put some air into them so they're not clumpy and then do a little bit at a time. So push a small bit to the end of the trunk and then fill up the rest of the head. Then fill up the legs until you're happy that it's nicely filled but not overstuffed. Take your time with this until it looks like this. So it's not overstuffed but it's nice and firm. The legs stand out, the trunk stays up and there aren't any, you don't want any creases or lumps in the seams. Once that's done, pin the edges of the turning gap together because you pressed them under earlier by half an inch. They're much easier to do. So just match up the folded under edge of each side of the turning gap and pin it together. Take your time with this to put lots of pins in because obviously your elephant is very stuffed so the stuffing will want to be getting in the way. But if you just pinch the two edges of the turning gap together and then pin them and do that all the way along. You might need to just push the stuffing inside that's trying to escape as you do it. I found it easier to place a pin in the centre to hold the centre edges together and then pin either side of it. It just helped to keep the turning gap even and also to hold it closed. And then you can always work back and remove the pins once you've got it held nice and close, closed. If you find that there are any edges that aren't matching up exactly, just go back and repin them. It makes it a lot easier when sewing. Like this one here, I'm just going to repin that because the edge seems to have come unfolded. Now, take a needle and thread it with some matching sewing thread, thread that will match the elephant colour. Now, push the needle about half an inch above the end of the seam. Leave a tail on the outside, it just stops it coming undone. You can trim that off later. And then work two or three small stitches on top of each other actually on the seam. This just secures the end of the thread and stops it coming undone and you've got a nice starting point then to do the seam. So now you need to just slip stitch those edges together. And the way you do this is you pull the needle up underneath the fold of the fabric on one side of the turning gap and then make a small vertical stitch over to the other side of the turning gap. And then you can leave a long stitch under the folded under edges and bring up the stitch the other side. Now with the elephant I found it was easier to work this, these slip stitches quite far apart like half an inch apart to start with just to secure it all the way down and then stitch back up again between those slip stitches so it looks like this. So by working two rows of stitches one anchors it and the other one holds the gap together once you've finished work a few small stitches on top of each other on one of the seams push the needle out further along the elephant so that the end isn't right on the end seam and give it a trim and now your elephant doorstop is finished isn't he gorgeous ready to put by your door hold your doors open or just to decorate your room <laughs>